Hello, and thank you for joining us. Today we're going to walk you through Exponent API's new mobile media extension for X-Ways Forensics. We're going to get right into it. So the first thing you need to do is launch an instance of X-Ways Forensics, which what we have already done here on the screen. Now, if you're new to using extensions, uh, I'll just quickly show you there's two ways to run extensions. Uh, one is through the re refined volume snapshot and uh, the intention behind this uh, means of executing an extension is to work with the data that's already in the case. Uh, the other way to run an extension is from the tools menu running an extension. And uh, Exponent API uses this approach here uh, because we're bringing data into Xways uh, for the most part. Uh, there is another extension um, that uh, we're working on that uh, will work within uh, X ways and that is the facial recognition, but that's another topic. It's coming there at the beginning of 2024 uh, But for now, uh, these are the four modules currently installed extensions. I should say and So what we're doing is we're going to select mobile media from our list of extensions and we click OK and This will start the application and uh, for those of you who are new to extensions extensions are Combine, uh, compiled executable code that runs within the memory space of X-Ways. So it's extremely fast and it taps into everything available uh, from a programmer's platform de development perspective, uh, which means you get speed, access to a bunch of things. So uh, unlike a scripting language, um, these extensions are compiled, they're robust, and they're catered specifically uh, to the uh, X-Ways forensics uh, platform. Once the about window has appeared, we can close it and this will launch the actual program within X-Ways. Now it is its own program, <clears throat> but it's sitting within the memory space of X-Ways. I can't click on the background right now because this window is at the forefront. Now, <clears throat> let's start with uh, what does mobile media do? Well, mobile media was designed to bring very simply pictures and video files uh, obtained from a mobile device into X-Ways Forensics so that you're working with the images and the videos within X-Ways. Uh, and why would we do that? Well, as uh, you know, past uh, <clears throat> practitioners like yourselves, we got tired of working with one platform, which would be X-Ways Forensics for your desktop, your notebook, your, your files and folders on, on an enterprise um, network and then having to use a separate uh, tool to you know image the device and search the device and search for keywords and all that sort of stuff so <clears throat> one thing xways uh, forensics doesn't do is image phones however it is a very powerful platform to deal with data no matter where it comes from so what we've done with mobile media is we've said okay you know what we'll we'll bring data in from supported third-party providers and what are the what is that list well so far in this release we're supporting magnet axioms uh, tool uh, which requires phones uh, but we're also supporting standalone iTunes backups um, there will also be standalone support for uh, backup SMS uh, for other tools <clears throat> but I digress uh, when it comes to uh, the mobile media uh, we'll get it from an iTunes backup or we'll get it from a third-party vendor uh, output so in this case here, like I said, Magnet Forensics is one of them, and we might be supporting other tools. I know, I know we'll be supporting other tools in the very, very near future. So now that we understand what uh, the tool is designed to do, let's proceed to the next step, and we'll select Configure Settings. Now, <clears throat> the first thing we need to do is, okay, we're going to bring data into X-Ways, but before we can do it, we need to put it in a folder somewhere on our computer system. Now, you probably have your case file data uh, and exhibits sorted nice and neat. Um, in our case here, we have a, a drive that we've set up specifically for demonstration purposes, so the Exponent API here. And actually, we're going to do one step further here uh, because it's a brand new uh, setup. On the drive, we're going to create a new folder. We're going to call this Cases. I'm going to call New Folder. I didn't want to put it there. Let's rename this. Call this Evidence. And see if we can drag that back up to the root. There we go. We're going to select evidence. So now we have a place to put our evidence. The next thing we need to do is we need to tell it where we're going to get the data from. <clears throat> On the next step, we have two sources. We have a device acquired using Magnet Axiom. And by default, we're assuming it's an iOS, but we can easily select Android. It doesn't matter which one. Um, 
I'll talk about this box here in just a second. I want to drop down to the bottom here and show you that we have an iTunes backup option as well. So if you have somehow collected an iTunes backup manually through another tool and put it somewhere on your system in a folder, you can point mobile media to that folder. Uh, and inside of the backup will be a manifest.db file. Well, we'll get to that in a second. When I go back up here to the magnet option, <clears throat> Uh, part of the acquisition process of that tool creates a file, a flat file called image info. And this file basically contains some information about the phone. Now we're going to use some sample data here and um, uh, I'm going to have to pause here while I, oh, here it is here. I, it actually jumped right to the exhibit. So here's some sample data and in here we have the image info file. And there it is. And now, uh, just for curiosity's sake, let me show you what's in that file, just so you understand. So here's some metadata about the acquisition, stuff like that. And then down here, we have something like the serial number and uh, the type of iPhone. So I just want to show you that really quickly, and uh, then we'll get back to where we are. So next step is to get some information about the acquisition itself. So we selected Magnet on the previous step. So now, now that it knows we're looking at that, type of source, it needs three pieces of information. First, it needs the case file that was created. Uh, and this is created when you process the evidence. Now, we're not reverse engineering anything here. We're just simply using uh, the contents of these uh, databases, which is, you know, a uh, standard SQLite database format. And uh, then these attachments. Now, these attachments are uh, basically stuff that's been collected out of or processed out of in this case here at iTunes Backup. And for convenience sake, uh, this tool puts the attachments uh, into another SQLite database. So we'll select that. And then the actual container file contains the encrypted, uh, not sorry, not the encrypted, but the iTunes Backup. It's found simply here in this zip file. Now, if we were to take a look inside of that, you would see that it looks just like a normal um, iTunes backup folder with the different, oh, in this case here, sorry, we're missing the, uh, this contains just the manifest. And outside of that, uh, we've already selected it is the attachments here. So um, that was a little misstep. Let's select that file again. So this here contains our manifest. And we're ready to go. We set the collection options. And this is the final step. The final step is to, okay, uh, maybe we want to add some customization to the top folder in our output. So when we're outputting to the folder we created, which was evidence, you remember we created that folder called evidence. Uh, when data comes in, we start putting it into X-Ways, we've got to put it somewhere. So this option here allows you to customize how that folder underneath the evidence folder appears. In this case here, we would like to use the make and model and serial number of the phone. Or you could just use the IMEI information, or you could just leave it alone, and we'll just create a default exponent dot mobile media folder. So when we're ready, um, <clears throat> we can start the collection, and this is going to be a very time-consuming process. Uh, why is this? Uh, because the phone that we cho chose to use has a lot of data, a lot of multimedia, and uh, there's a number of steps involved. Um, I will pause here for just a quick second to catch my breath. Actually, I, uh, I had a cough. So anyway, we're back. Uh, so there's a bunch of stages involved. There's three stages um, and several tasks, if you would. As you can see from the current task, we're processing the acquired artifacts within the Axiom solution files. Well, let's just call it solution files. And the f there's three stages. The first stage is we're going to identify what, what could be a file. Uh, what could be a picture? What could be a video? And then the second column here, process, that's when... Mobile media actually handles the files and says, okay, is this a, a real JPEG? Is this a real movie file? Pulls out any timestamps um, or decodes some timestamps or copies the timestamps from the source information. And then the final step is to actually choose, okay, is this a valid uh, media file? Yes, and then we're gonna carve it out. So there's identified, processed, and carved. Um, as you can see here, we're processing as many as 89,000 uh, potential artifacts and for time savings purposes for the video I'm going to put this on pause 
and I'll come back in a few minutes, uh, maybe as much as 30 minutes, when it's nearing the completion of the carved state or task. So here we go. I'm going to put on pause and I'll join you here in a very short while. Well, we're back and it looks like uh, it's progressing nicely. I uh, just wanted to take a pause here for a second and show you that uh, some time has already gone by. I'm talking at 43 minutes here and uh, we've carved out as many as 47,000 files. So at this point here, uh, I'm going to take a, one more pause and when we come back, we'll, we should be completely done here and uh, we'll, we'll pick it up from there. And I'm back and it looks like things are going to wrap up here in just a moment and then we can get started with uh, the processing within X-Ways. So we'll just hang in here just a, a couple more moments. Getting close now. And now what you're seeing is X-Ways Forensics is uh, traversing the file folder structure that we created in that evidence folder that uh, we defined at the start. And so as it uh, completes that, it's going to build the tree in the data pane, the case data pane, the top left corner of your screen here, right in here. And uh, then we can get started. So this may take a, a couple more minutes. There's an awful lot of files for it to go through. Um, I will pause it for just a second and I'll come right back. And it looks like it's finally complete. Now that it's completed, mobile media is going to tell you, please, uh, run refine volume snapshot to further process the evidence. So that's what we're going to do. We'll click OK. Close this. Oh, get this back to the forefront here. Uh, we can see the results here. So far we got, uh, we have a total of well, close to 72,000 uh, files and it took us about 49 minutes to complete. Let's uh, close this and we'll get rid of this little messages window. And a couple things we get before we get started, you can see right off the top of the bat in the top left corner, we see a, a folder called Exponent Mobile Media. So this is the root of our evidence. And we'll delve into that in just a second. But before we do that, I wanted to show you uh, this file that was created, the collection info text. Uh, when we preview that file, we can see that uh, it's basically a log file that tells you uh, what was done, the date and time, uh, any particular uh, features, but it also includes the uh, the uh, original source acquisition information for continuity purposes. Uh, that way, if you had to explain, you know, where did this data come from? Well, uh, Mo Exponent Mobile Media took uh, did this on this certain time, and this is where it got the original information. So, anyway, that's the collection info text file. <clears throat> to continue on with our examination, let's first break open. Uh, the exponent mobile media folder. Now, because we selected the uh, make, model, and serial number, this is the folder that I was telling you about that was created right here. And inside of there, we got two folders. We have the Apple iPhone quick image zip file and iTunes backup. Now, the first folder is created to collect all of the data from that uh, magnet axiom case file. The second folder is the contents of the iTunes backup parsed on top of what axiom did. Now there will be some duplicity uh, but in some cases again the reason why uh, we go that extra step to pull out the iTunes backup uh, is because we can't presume to know what processing options the forensic examiner chose when he acquired the device originally using Axiom. So uh, the assumption is that there's some photos and videos in there, but just in case there were some restrictions that we don't know about, uh, mobile media will go into the iTunes backup and parse it all by itself, but it'd be a complete parsing. So let's just compare apples and oranges here for a minute. When we break open the files, the uh, quick image, we see that it's recovered the file system. It's created the DCIM folder with all the, the pictures and files. Uh, some photo data. We have some metadata down here, more stuff. And then if we were to look at the iTunes backup, 
we have some different folders. We have library, we have message, media. So we have, you can see here, WhatsApp. So we have some items that have been recovered from a WhatsApp as well. Um, I'm not going to go into much more detail. This is strictly a getting started video. And uh, <clears throat> the purpose is to show you what the results look like when it comes into X-Ways Forensics. Uh, as far as timestamps go, um, you will see that uh, the created, modified, and accessed timestamps reflect the very date and time that these files were uh, stored on your hard drive during the import process. Where you might see some timestamps uh, emerge will be the content created. Now, uh, what we haven't done yet is refine volume snapshot. So, although I was going to cut this video a bit short, we've got a couple more things to talk about. And that is timestamps uh, and extra metadata, EXIF metadata, and so forth. So what we're going to do is we're going to run the refined volume snapshot. And what we're interested in here is extracting any internal metadata. Uh, we can look for extra email attachments, but that's not going to work for us for here. <clears throat> we can uh, select other advanced features. But the big thing here is the file signature analysis and extracting internal metadata. So we're just going to run this as is against the whole file. And again, we got an awful lot of files here to uh, go through. Uh, so I'm going to put the video on pause. I'll come back here in a minute just as we're getting near the end and then we can see what has changed uh, within our case file. Well, we're back and it just finished for us. So we can click OK. And now that it's completed, uh, I, I want before we get started here, uh, I would just want to uh, explain that one of the things that X-Way Forensics does very well is it also identifies HEIC, so the high efficiency image encoding file format, especially if you have photos from an iPhone, it will break open those containers and, and bring them into uh, as uh, child objects. Now when we look at the timestamps, we have the created, um, timestamps uh, when we brought it in. If there's metadata that it can extrapolate, it'll extrapolate. And just to give you an example, let's just recursive everything. And as you can see from the created timestamps, we have 2022 and uh, different dates and times here. So uh, it will do a great job and the metadata will get extracted if there is some EXIF metadata. Identify the, the smartphone from the EXIF metadata. So this is a uh, complete introduction to mobile media. Um, and thank you for joining us. Uh, as a reminder, if you have any suggestions for other extensions, uh, by all means, please uh, let us know. You can write to us uh, at info at uh, apiforensics.com or support at. Um, we also uh, will fix anything that's uh, if you, certain tweaks or fixes you'd like to see in the existing library. Then that's great. Let us know. And just to let you know, too, that uh, the uh, Exponent API library is a, uh, a work in progress, which means we're continually adding on to it. So with your subscription, as a reminder, it's a pay once. And uh, as you uh, use the tool and other tools come out under the API, You'll get those at no cost. And uh, so, yeah. Again, thanks again for joining us. And I look forward to seeing you in future videos. Have a good day.